Good day, everyone. This is the last part for adjusting entries, and I'm going to focus on errors. Anyway, the errors that is said here is when we omit the adjustments. The errors in which, for example, we have, let's say, erroneously recorded a transaction or adjusting entry, that will be in another topic or session that we are going to have. So that was already to be released. Anyway, so if we are going to look into this one, let's say, for example, we fail to record an accrual, we fail to record either an accrued income or accrued expense, depending on the case, or we fail to adjust a deferral, either a prepayment of expense or a pre-collection of income, and so on. So in that case, that would have impact on the financial statements, specifically, of course. So let's have it. So we have here the effects of omitting adjustments. So hopefully it's also clear at your end. Now, when an accountant failed to include the proper adjusting entries, then of course the financial statements would not be accurate. That's the thing, or that would encapsulate what is being meant here. And we have to take note that an error in one area of accounting or phase or step would have impact on the subsequent steps. So that would result to inaccuracy in the next accounting period. That would be really much of a challenge in a manual accounting system, but then because we are using computerized accounting systems now, that's going to be something of little concern in terms of the computation because the software itself can adjust once you have incorporated the adjustments later on, just in case we realize that we got some errors. Anyhow, so this is, for example, the borrowing of money. So there's interest, and that would result to accrual of interest. If we failed, for example, to record the adjustment for the interest, which is at 8,000 pesos, remember, that's going to be interest equals principal times rate times time. So that's 100,000 times 16% times 6 over 12 because from July 1, 2019 to December 31, 2019, there are actually six months. So that would result to 8,000. What would have been the entry? Debit interest expense, 8,000. Credit interest payable, it's here. So what would be the impact on the financial statements if we failed to record that? That would result to understated expenses which would result to overstated profits and overstated equity, right? So remember, profit is directly connected or related to equity. On another hand, for interest payable, that's a liability with lesser liabilities. So in that case, for example, we assume that assets would be constant, lesser liabilities, so equity would be higher, okay? Remember also that liabilities and equities have inverse relationship. Okay, so that is somehow what we would like to say here that if we fail to record an adjusting entry, that would have impact on the financial statements, either an overstatement of one or an understatement of the other. All right, then on maturity date, when the note is paid together with the interest, in that case, because there was no adjusting entry made to accrue the interest in 2019, so the entire interest of 24,000 will be charged against profit from or of 2020 in its entirety. So in that case, that would result to higher expenses and lower profits. So interest expense is overstated, profit is understated. And then the Balance sheet, though, is correctly stated since the note along with the interest has been settled by year end. So the entire value of the interest has been, of course, paid. Okay. Then omission is counterbalanced by this accounting period. All right. Anyway, this is a counterbalancing error, which will be discussed in higher accounting subjects, depending on the course, though, because the impact of one will be countering in the next. Another one is analysis using the account. So this is also discussed in higher accounting, especially in single entry and cash to accrual basis. 
It's just that if we were, example, analyzed using the T-account, you know that supplies is an asset account. So the beginning balance would be here, debit. And then what would be the reduction for supplies or the reductions, possible minuses, if there would be expenses. So once we consume the supplies or use the supplies, what would add to the supplies? If there would be additional acquisition of supplies in the form of payments, right? Or cash paid. But if we purchase an account, that's also one way of increasing that. So the net value minus the supplies purchase on account will be the cash paid for supplies. Okay, so that's going to be on supplies here. So the point here is that we can actually squeeze if we would like to the values of the payments of the respective prepayments or for the pre-collections, the amount that were received or the amounts received in the process. And then for expenses for the month, we can also know and how much is the income if this is pre-collection. And finally, let's look into this particular summary in which I have already discussed this in some point or points, I would say, but then this is a good way of summarizing like the impact of what was the situation prior to adjustment and with the adjusting entry. And this would have been better if we also have like what happened after the adjustment. Anyway, so after the adjustments, everything is correct or updated the balances are now accurate. The adjusting entry is the tool for updating and correcting the balances. For prepaid expenses, let's say asset method, if that was prior to adjustment, asset would be more because that was the focus, expense would be lower. And the reverse would be true for expense method. For depreciation, because the asset was recognized first, which is PPE, so before adjustment, asset would be over, expense would be under. By the way, overstated is that the amount is more than what should be, while understated would mean that the amount is lacking with something or another amount. And earned revenue, if liability method, liability would be over, income would be under, and the reverse is true if income method. For accrued expenses, prior to adjusting entry, we don't have the entry to credit liability. So liabilities would be under or lower. Expenses would also be lower. Accrued revenue, since we did not recognize yet the receivable, so assets would be under and the income would be under. All right? So that's a great summary to close adjusting entries. Thank you very much for listening and God bless us all.